Attention joy smokers, bong rippers, and butter dabbers. It's Tuesday, August 6th, and you're watching the Murnawana Zone, live from Vapor Central. This week on the show, we've got a special Skype guest calling in for Beverly Hills. We've got our new segment, What's in Your Stash? And everybody's favorite segment, the 420 Swap. And now, here he is, the Corso Italian Stallion, the Canadian Champion of Cannabis, Matt Myrna! Woo! 200 vapor bag challenge in progress. Exciting show tonight. Um, Cheryl Schumann from Beverly Hills added us at Skype. I can't believe that. So I, exciting. I, I Skype, I've been tweeting her and gmailed her, and we got her. So you've been bothering her, and she agreed to do the show. Listen. <laughs> <coughs> I, it's hard for me. I'm flying on the radar of the Beverly Hills people, you know. I'm excited. It's, yeah, so we hope to have her here. She, um, we uh, originally she's at the Gary Governor Gary Johnson um, fundraiser. So we're oh. really hoping that she'll fit us in. And I was like, hey, you call us anytime. Here's our Skype account. The secret pick me up for some Beverly Hills moms. They say it's marijuana hmm. and that that is new the mommy's new helper it makes them better wives they say better mothers it's all We're legal medically right in california with marijuana purchased at dispensaries with a prescription yes, it but it's giving person. new meaning to the term potluck party uh, oh no <laughs> on a recent evening at a this home a in beverly video. hills a few moms yeah. gathered to enjoy food friendship and a few laughs they do garnish incredibly well. Yes. But this was no ordinary potluck party. Vaporizer time. Welcome to the Beverly Hills Cannabis Club, a place where marijuana moms congregate to take a break from the stress of family life. So this is um, strawberry pop. Your hostess, the self-proclaimed Martha Stewart of marijuana, Cheryl Schumann. Cannabis not only made me a better mom, Cannabis made me a better human being. Yes. Cannabis made you a better mom? Absolutely. Absolutely. So how did this all come to be? Well, flashback 10 years. Cheryl was a married mother of two and a successful optician to the stars. But after her marriage fell apart, she says her entire life slipped out of focus. I was just completely uh, disabled by a crippling depression. Cheryl needed an escape. She tried prescription drugs, but popping Prozac to get up and Xanax to come down every day felt more like a prison than a panacea. So one day I was at my therapist's office and I told him, I said, please help me get my life back. And he said, you need to smoke a joint. So I took a, a hit off of it. I was smiling and happy. And I was like, this is really great. But critics might say, yes, you are high. I was definitely medicated, but I will tell you that Good I answer. felt better having two puffs of cannabis at that time than I had ever had any kind of results with pharmaceuticals. Cheryl's daughter Amy agrees. I felt like my mom was checked out on prescription pills. It was like living with a zombie, but when she would smoke, she was smiling. She was connecting with us. It okay. felt like we had our mom back. Medical marijuana is now legal in 18 <laughs> states, but parenting and pot, still taboo. You know, though, there are people out there thinking, mothers who smoke pot are bad moms. I'm going to tell it from the point of view of my 10-year-old child. When I'm in pain, I'm in bed for days. I don't talk. I'm miserable. My son will come up to me and say, Mom, it's time to medicate. That's and what I mean. He means go get some cannabis come back to us. That's what I tell you. If your 10-year-old child is okay with it, I think adults should be okay with it. It's a controversial story, but you know, there was a headline recently that more women in America are dying of prescription drug yes. overdose yeah. than anything else and uh, than anyone else. So these moms maintain that marijuana used uh, responsibly is a safer alternative. Although we should point out, bought with a prescription yeah. in California. Well, and, and many of them aren't. So, at any and then we'll have Cheryl up next. Chris is working the Skype back there. DJ Goodwin's on his birthday tomorrow. Getting getting token. Hardcore token. How's those dab bags doing, guys? Like these are not weed bags. These are dab bags. Butter. Butane honey oil. Has everybody had a bag passed around their group? Hi Cheryl, how are you tonight? 
I'm doing great. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing a hundred vapor bag challenge. So good. So, oh, oh, what's um, that? We're gonna try and brew a hundred vapor bags in like forty-five minutes and pass it out in the room, and it's filled with. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> and it's filled with butane honey oil, the butter, as the kids say. Oh wow, that's powerful stuff. Yeah, greed. <laughs> Tell us how did you? Why did you actually? Decide to come out of the marijuana closet. Why? <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I I think I lost my mind, actually. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was really, really ill. And um, I um, was literally just on a, just kind of a, like a last resort. And I was in Ohio. I had gone back to visit my family. And when I was diagnosed, you know, I just kind of made peace with, with everything. And then a friend of mine, I had reconnected with him from high school from literally like 30 years ago. And he had told me about um, this cannabis strain that he had that his sister was growing for different dispensaries in California. And he told me about it. Long story short, I tried it. And within 30 days, I was off of all the machines, off of all the IVs. Uh, you know, I had a, a catheter and a colostomy, and it was a very ugly existence. And so within 30 days, I was off of all the pharmaceuticals, off of all the machines. And within 60 days, I was able to bathe by myself, which, you know, when you're terminally ill and when you're very, very ill, being able to bathe by yourself is a huge deal. So... Um, I just felt like cannabis had kind of gotten a bad rap and I feel like a lot of society people kind of look down on cannabis people and I was watching the mainstream media and everything and I just felt like they were making us look bad and I felt like somebody had to take a stand and really stand up because I know working out here in Hollywood almost everybody uses pot. Um, they either smoke it or eat it or whatever. And I just felt that everyone was kind of being a hypocrite, you know? And it's like, how can you, how can you put such a negative spin on this when I know you smoke and I know you smoke and I know you smoke. So I just felt it was important, important for someone to take a stand and come out of the closet. And, you know, we have such a strong community, you know, with, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to go up to the Seattle Hemp Fest and speak in front of, I think, I think they're expecting like 300,000 people this year. That's going to be an and, incredible experience, I'm sure. Um, oh, yeah, it's great. So, but it's interesting because we have so much support, but I really feel like we really need to get to that mainstream to get them to wake up and really take a look at what's really happening in the world. And I really feel like we're witnessing the end of cannabis prohibition right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's largely due to the fact that we have social media today and programs like yours. And, you know, people are starting to speak out and come out of the closet. And, and I think it's just really important to empower those people. I agree with what you, you have a fascinating story. So my question, you're talking about sort of image branding. And we watched the uh, the video. This is the third week in a row we've watched your video of that news segment. God, you guys must be getting so sick of me. <laughs> no, we're we're curious. And, and one of the one of my questions is is do you feel like the news media tries to bring you, I guess, downward by making it jokey or adding a lot of cannabis, I guess, tomfoolery when the real? I mean, I don't mind doing the tomfoolery and and having fun with it. But I watch your when what you're trying to do and bring a very serious message to cannabis. Do you feel like the media is trying to drag you down to the tomfoolery level? Well, I'm not sure which interview you're speaking about specifically, but I remember um, a couple of instances um, with Elizabeth Vargas on 2020. And um, I had talked about the fact that my doctor at that time had me on antidepressants and anti-anxiety. And I told her, I said, you know, my, it was my shrink that recommended cannabis. He had his own garden. And I said, I took two puffs and I instantly felt better. And she goes, well, of course you did because you were high. 
And so I looked at her and I said, well, I was definitely medicated, but, you know, I was happy and smiling and I would prefer those effects over pharmaceuticals any day. So even though I felt like she kind of tried to get a jab in, that it wasn't really a medicine for me, um, I felt like I handled it. Same thing with um, Barbara Walters on The View. Um, she came at me really hard. And, you know, people, people sometimes criticize me and how I handle the media, but, you know, it's not always easy. Going up against these seasoned journalists when you know they have an agenda to make you look bad, it's, it's not an easy job. But I remember she said to me, she says, well, Cheryl, you know, the NIDH and the DEA and the so forth, and they say that smoking marijuana is more dangerous than drugs or tobacco or alcohol or anything. And, you know, and I, I got her back. I mean, I, I said, I said, well, perhaps there's some truth to that, but the American Medical Association just recognized that there's medicinal value. The American Veterans Association has just allowed for all of their soldiers coming back with PTSD and, you know, uh, trying to commit suicide, they have acknowledged that medical marijuana works for these people. So you can't deny that. And then I hit her again in a nice way and said, actually, Barbara, I don't smoke marijuana. I vaporize. That's Just how like I you do. guys. That's how I prefer. You know? <laughs> I really liked your answer when she did try to say, are you, because you were high and you hit her with, no, I'm medicated. That's the correct answer. Media have often tried to get me that way. They try and like, well, you just want to get high. And my answer usually is, well, those Oxycontins and the Demerol that they shot up into me, that got me much, much higher. Um, yes. No, you're, ab you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. I just don't think they get it. And, you know, they, sometimes they'll have these addiction specialists that come on and they'll say things like, well, if you're using it every day, you're addicted. Well, I'm so sorry, but Xanax was prescribed for me every day. Vicodin was prescribed for me every day. How could you say that I'm addicted to marijuana when I'm using medicinally in the same type of dosage and format that I would if it were a pill? Thanks. But those pills, you know, wrecked havoc and were, were horribly upsetting to my stomach. And, you know, it's a quality of life issue. You know, and then they always hit me with the, I don't, you probably get this too, where they say, come on, you're really just a stoner, right? You're well, really just doing this to get high, right? It's, it's, and, it's, <laughs> well, I have to laugh and say, you know what? I, I have to say, okay, let's talk about alcohol. Let's no. talk about cannabis as an alternative to alcohol. And the truth of the matter is, if someone chooses to use cannabis over alcohol. It's proven that it's safer. No one's ever died from an overdose of marijuana. And um, so in my opinion, as a woman, and, and especially as a corporate woman who's concerned about her weight, <laughs> I would much prefer if I did not use it medicinally, I absolutely think there's nothing wrong with using marijuana responsibly as an adult. And if I choose or my friends choose, male or female, to use cannabis over a fifth of Jack Daniels or whatever it is yep. that they're drinking, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think that should be embraced. I agree. And uh, it is safer. And, 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 you know, I just think that the more we educate people, the better it's going to be. Exactly. And how did you come about with the subtitle, The Martha Stewart of Marijuana, and, and, and kind of bring about that Beverly Hills Society image that you're trying to create with your, your social group there and... What, what, how, what is your sort of methodology of, of bringing about sort of the, this image of the um, Beverly Hills, Martha Stewart type stoner mom? If I'm sorry to apologize on the stoner mom, but I guess that would be <laughs> That's okay. Um, well, basically, let's see, in two th it was 2008 or 2009, I think. You know, I, 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 our families lived in Beverly Hills for, let's see, 28 years um so that was really my home for many many years and everything that i did was there um and then when i got sick and then came back to california i was approached by normal to start up a chapter in beverly hills for them which was beverly hills normal and i was the executive director and founder of that so i did that and then i did um the very first hempcon i don't know if you have hempcons there but i did this very first big event and at the press conference um the interviewer was asking a question. He said, so now tell me who you are and tell me what you do again. And I said, well, I'm the executive director of Beverly Hills Normal. 
but I also have a magazine called Cush Magazine that's about the industry. And I also have an events and production company. And I have a TV series in development. And he said, oh, he says, that's too much. That's, that's just too much to say. Uh, you're the Martha Stewart of marijuana. That, that's what it is, okay? Okay, live, four, three, two, one. And we're live with Cheryl Schumann, the Martha Stewart of marijuana. And that's how it kind of came about. And then I was like, you know, that's, that kind of sums it all up because she has a magazine. She had a talk show at the time. You know, she was a woman, a mom, and it centered around entertaining and all that sort of thing. So I thought, okay, that's kind of a good way, a catchy way. And the media is always looking for catchphrases, you know, and quick things that they can condense into sound bites. So I was like, okay, well, that's simple. That's, and it's easy to remember. So, um, you know, then it just kind of caught on. And one of the things that happens with media, especially mainstream media, you know, earned media begats media. So just like you have one show, then other people see that, and then they write about it, and then it goes on and on and on. So, um, so it just kind of caught on. And then, you know, in my little circle of friends, you know, there's a lot of Beverly Hills people and entertainment people and Hollywood people that use marijuana. And with my business before, I had a business making house calls for film and television uh, with eyeglasses. And when people found out that I was in town and I had my own garden, and my own collective and everything, they wanted to join it, be a part of it, and come to these events that I was doing. Excellent. So, um, so then, you know, I wanted to make sure that it was all legal. So we set up a corporation, not, prof not for profit, which is what you have to be here in California. And then I just started doing these dinner parties. And one of the things that I really missed, you know, after being sick was I really missed going and, you know, because I like, I like fine dining, you know, I like fine dining. I'm not going to apologize for it. I like to get dressed up so and I. have a really nice meal. And, you know, and I, I prefer to use cannabis with my meal because it helps me with digestion. Agreed. And so, yeah, I started doing these dinner parties and they just really started catching on. And, you know, some people, they make fun of me because I do a lot of video diaries and I laugh and I, 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 I tease myself because I'm like, with, with my video camera, you know, I've always got it out in front there. And it's like, I'm my own paparazzi, right? So it's funny. You have but to I do be. These I video have over 300 diaries. videos. Yeah. And so, so I, wanted, I wanted to show people, you know, we're so blessed and we're so fortunate here in California, specifically in Los Angeles, because we have some tremendous freedoms here uh, to be able to use cannabis and, and be open about it and celebrate that. And I feel that by sharing these video diaries that it helps people who live in illegal states or who are perhaps in the closet or maybe they are in the corporate world or maybe they're in some religious group and they're feeling shame or whatever. I feel like this gives them a glimpse into the possibilities because if we all see, hey, there is a lifestyle possible where I can use cannabis in the mainstream world and it's normal. This is all very normal for me Agreed. to you know, have dinner parties and to use cannabis. And so I think the more we normalize it, and I think the more we empower people that live in these illegal states, to me, you know, I, I look, I've done a lot of protests and sign holding and press conferences and all that, but social media is a proven game changer. Agreed. How many third world countries have overcome their dictators and so forth through the use of social media? So I feel like if I can somehow tap into people's hearts and minds of like, hey, I really enjoy cannabis. I would love to be able to have a dinner party like that and use cannabis and have it legal in my state. That's how we get people off of their ass and out changing the world. Agreed. And that's what I wanted to do. I have, Sorry, um, I get a little bit aggressive. No, that's perfect because it's I'm a three-hour <laughs> show, so I, it takes, you know, you can talk quite a bit. We love you. It's, you're coming in great on the Skype. The Skype's working great, DJ Goodwins. We got a recording of this for later, um, so we really appreciate your time because um, no I I agree with social media is the big game changer, and that's why we do the Myrtle Mana Zone. We are here live at Weber Central, six six seven Young Street, the second floor, downtown Toronto. We're vaping up a storm here, trying to hotbox the lounge, and we're talking <laughs> from someone from Beverly Hills. And the one commonality is, of course, the cannabis culture. And we've grown up on that culture as Canadians. 
Uh, a lot of us know, as Canadians, we know where Beverly Hills is. And is it correct to say you're in the area code 90210? That's right. Oh, yeah! <laughs> It's funny, right? I it's think funny because, like, for us, like, it's it's kind of very, very far away from our reality, really. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I know. But I it's, know. it's not that big of a deal, though, to be honest with you. It's so funny. You know, I grew up in Appalachia. You know, I was I was a hillbilly born and raised. You know, I grew up on a far tobacco farm, of all things. You know? Oh, wow. So, um you know, it's it's really. I mean, for me, I think it's really cool, and I think it's a blessing because I I feel very blessed to be able to relate to people from all different kinds of socio and economic levels. You know, I mean, I grew up without running water or electricity until I was fourteen years old. That's how far out in the boonies and how poor I think Smash we were. grew up that way too. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I think to me, what I've seen because I've been on both sides. You know, I've been extremely wealthy and a multimillionaire, and I've been dirt poor, broken, homeless. You know, I mean, I've seen it all. I'm a 53 year old woman, and I've seen a lot of life. Nice. And Ryan, the one do you have a that I pardon. Do you have a question? Maybe we'll get some other questions. So, you have a. Oh. Um, I had some. Just gonna check with around with people to see if they had questions. So. You, you I have a question. Oh. oh, Smash has got a question. I have a question. Do you have like a certain type of marijuana that you prefer, like a Kush or a sativa or an indica? Well, I have I have my own garden, so I'm really spoiled. And oh. in fact, I have a funny story for you guys. We, my daughter and I, I don't know if you saw my daughter on the Katie Couric show around 2020. Yes, but we when did. We decided, pardon? Yes, we did. We did see your daughter. <laughs> Well, when we decided to do our garden, we wanted to do a legal garden, we made a trip to Toronto to check it out. And that's where we decided, we went to all the seed shops and everything, and we decided that we were going to have the 31 flavors of cannabis, just like Baskin Robbins has the 31 flavors of ice cream. So and what that's did what you we pick up? So <laughs> do you remember so any of I, the names of the strains that you picked up? Well... A couple of my favorites are Pineapple Express, Blue Dream, I like a lot. That's a really good yielder. Um, nice. The old school Green Crack, Sour Diesel, OG Kush, Purple Kush. I mean, I love all of those. Very nice. I think Stra Strawberry Cough from Barney's Farm is a really good pure sativa. I like that a lot. So those are those are the favorites that, like, I know, like, <laughs> I've got a, my little thing. We're big yeah. Barney's Farm fans here. We're big Barney's Farm I Barney's love fans. Barney's Farm. I want to go. I want to go tour their facility someday. I've been. It's fantastic. Barney's Farm. Is it really? Yeah. It's unbelievably. Do you, have the, do you have the hookup for me, Matt? For sure. <laughs> I am the hookup to just about any grower in Amsterdam. We're going to send you a copy of the Marijuana Smokers Guidebook, The Easy Way to Identify and Enjoy Marijuana Strains. That's my book. It's got 150. You have to all sign it. Of course. We, I can't believe you. So do you spend time growing your own marijuana? Do you go down and water your plants or do you make your daughter do the work? <laughs> I make her do it all. Nice. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what kids are for. Exactly. <laughs> no, actually, what happened, the guy that I told you about that saved my life, that yep. found the cannabis for me, he came out with me, and we have 68 Ooh. acres up north. Wow. And he and his, his four children run the farm. Now, they're all grown children. But, um, yeah, they run the farm for us. I do go up occasionally, but most of my time, honestly, is spent on business and production and it, here in Los Angeles. I, I love going to the farm. I love, love, love it. You know, I spent yep. the first uh, the first two years that we had a garden, I was there full time and then would just come down to LA just when I absolutely had to because I just I just fell in love with it. There's there's nothing like having your own garden. There really isn't. I, there's I, some I, kind of an energy or something that comes from those plants. And not only when you ingest it, but just the energy around them yep. that is very healing and meditational to me. And I, I just really love it. It puts me at peace. There was an interesting, when we were doing my court case, one of the documents we pulled out of the government of Canada was a study that they did on the Canadian medical marijuana patients. And one of the doctors came back and said, well, they're also getting therapeutic relief from, the f from growing the plant itself. That they have control. Well, I, I totally over... agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what are your favorite strains, you guys? Oh, geez, I'm uh, some of our favorite strains, other than the ones in the book. Right now, we're going through OG18. That's the uh, OG Kush, and it's it's from DNA Genetics. It's pretty intense. 
Uh, we got a bunch of lemon drop butter. We got some other butter. I'm not sure what the butter is. Um, we've been, uh, Exodus Kush is big with me. The LSD, we love all the time, but, um, you know, LSD we don't grow it. Uh, Wonder fun. Woman from, uh, the Prozac was good, too. The Prozac was really they good. They have a strain called Prozac? Yeah, Paradise so Seeds has, uh, the Prozac strain, and it's pole. I didn't by the way, the cannabis. sounds that people were hearing on Pod TV, uh, Russell Barth was trying to call in on Skype too. We might even bring him in at 8 p.m. together with Cheryl just for a few minutes. I have a okay, go Sam. I have a question. Okay. Um, I've always favored mixing cannabis into a butter and putting it as like a breakfast sandwich or something. But what do you think is like the best recipe or food that mixes with cannabis? Good I'm question. so spoiled. I am so, so spoiled, you guys. I have three chefs that cook for me. What? <laughs> yeah. That's like I couldn't dream. cook to save my life. You I do garnish really visit. well, but I have the best chefs in the world. Um, yeah, um, my favorite chef is Chef David Chanals. He's the executive chef for La Dolce Vita, which is my favorite uh, Italian restaurant in Beverly Hills. They've been there for decades. And my super favorite dish is chicken piccata with grilled asparagus and garlic um, potatoes. And he does them all with garlic, uh, medicated garlic butter. And um, I'm coming out with my own lines of medicated olive oils and truffle oils that he cooks with because it's really that that gives it the flavor and, you know, the vibe. Wow. Um, so that's my absolute favorite. But, you know, I also, we have a great lasagna and ravioli. I mean, almost any single thing that is five star rated as far as restaurants and their menus in Beverly Hills, I've got it. Wow. <laughs> wow. And so I, I'm Color me really hungry. spoiled. Oh, I'm like, Too bad you're not gluten free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so I, I think that's why people like to come to my dinner parties because I feed them really well. I want to go. You know, with only the finest food and the finest uh, cannabis and, you know, great company. And, you need to crash on your couch. Sound my, like... my, my dream someday, I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, the Grand Havana Room or the Soho House. They're private mm -hmm. dining and private, it's private fine dining clubs and private cigar smoking lounges. And my ultimate dream is to be able to have a really nice, elegant dinner place where you can have cannabis in your food at the same time. Ooh. I think that would be really cool. That would be a really nice party. The eh? more she says private, the more turned on I get. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, I mean, you know, I mean, out here, I mean, it's, you know, a lot of my friends, they work in the entertainment industry. And, you know, so many times, I mean, that's why I usually have them at my place. Oh, well, I think I lost you. Did we lose? No, we still got you. We're You're trying still there. to. We're just silly. Something happened. Uh our oh, Skype okay. has another caller on the line. We're trying to like oh, okay. Oh, okay. record. Hey, it's Russell Barth. Hey, Russell, we're gonna get to you in like five minutes, okay, buddy? We got one more Skype caller. We're going on with. It's no going. Problem. It's running no on. Problem. Thanks, buddy. All right, Cheryl, you've been a wonderful, wonderful guest on our show, and we welcome you back anytime. Um, Thank you so much for having me. Give everyone my best. We will. And one last thing, you, you're shooting a reality TV show. You're doing a lot more video. Where can people watch you? Well, the best thing to do is to go to BeverlyHillsCannabisClub.com. Sign up there for updates. What we're doing is we're gathering all the footage as we go, and then we're going to team up with one of the production houses here to go to network. It's probably, I mean, my hunch would be ABC because we've been doing so much with them. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that. That's amazing. Dude. Excellent. Do you see, um, as you said, um, with social media and the media that you're doing, that these things, uh, ABC or some of the bigger, one of the big networks will take it simply because Washington is legalized and Colorado has legalized and that's the push going that they might I just... Think that's, I think that's a big part of it, but the big switch that's been uh, for media that I've been talking to, all the production companies that I'm talking to now, they say, Cheryl, when you did the Katie Couric show, when you guys did 2020, when you did the Pierce Morgan special, it's like the dam broke open and now mainstream <laughs> wants this programming. And it's interesting because my phone has not stopped ringing. And so I just think I just think that they finally saw something. I I feel like with other series they've kind of played us as like and pardon the words, but they usually refer to us as the stupid stoners. It's and 
my agent told me, he said, Cheryl, he said, everybody wants it because it's marijuana, but they're going to stay because it's women and it's business and it's jobs and it's interesting, you know, because we, you, you know, it's something, it's not what they were expecting. It's just like Barbara Walters on The View. She looked at me, she turned around and she looked to her producer and she said, are these the pot moms? And then I sat down next to her and she said, I'm so sorry. She said, you were just not what I was expecting. So I think that's what happens. Everybody tunes in because it's pot, and then they see who and what we are. It's like, oh, my God. And then they start to listen. Well, we can uh, look forward to watching you in the future. And thanks again for Skype calling us and chatting with us for a half hour. That was amazing. I thought Thank we Thank you. My pleasure. I'm glad we finally connected. You guys have a great night, okay? Oh, we're going to do that. We're ripping through 100 vapor bags of BHO, and that was Cheryl <laughs> Schumann. And Welcome back anytime, and again, thanks for giving us 30 minutes. All right. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Have a great night, you guys. And if you're ever in L.A., look me up. I hope she stops by if she's ever in Toronto again. Heck, I'm going to Beverly Hills, and they're going to ask her to marry me. <laughs> <laughs>